Good morning, I'm Sunetra Chaudhary, political editor of the Hindustan Times, bringing you all that you need to know about COVID-19 on Friday, the 22nd of May. First up, a look at the numbers. In just the last 24 hours, we've added 5,830 new cases across the country. The number of death now stands at 3,510. And all of this amounts to major economic impact. And that brings us to our top story. A group of ministers headed by Thavarchand Gehlot has now published a report on the impact it has on unemployment and jobs and given it to the Prime Minister. The report says 93 million workers from the unorganized sector have lost their wages. They also say that even the organized sector, various employers, factories, all of them have been impacted as well. And so it has various recommendations which the Prime Minister now has to cover. One of those recommendations says that there needs to be major tweaking of the Employment Guarantee or Manrega scheme, which allows people and the workers to work for private employers as well. It also says they should all have a job card. It asks for a new app called Koshal, which will help the workers upskill, to reskill. And it says in order for migrant workers to come back to the cities from where they left, they need to have confidence building measures, which could be in the form of medical insurance, could be in the form of scholarships for their children. So we just have to wait and see what out of this the government actually implements. It says that the lockdown was effective, but says it did lead to a major economic crisis, which is now facing the country. And speaking of economic crisis and the lockdown, that's our second story. Dr. S.K. Sareen, who heads the panel here in the capital that advises the Chief Minister of Delhi, says that the lockdown may have been more effective if it had lasted for 12 weeks. He's giving 12 weeks because that is the example and the instance that is set by Wuhan. In India, he says, we've seen this nine week lockdown and it was effective in buying the government and everyone time. But he says that there is going to be a peak in July and August. He also says that there should be extensive antibody testing because right now he says the areas that are in the green zone are the places that we are going to see future infections. And by testing and doing antibody testing in red zones, we'll get to see whether the other people who may have inadvertently picked up the infection, whether they have developed antibodies or not. The next story that we have is speaking of antibodies, two studies have been done internationally which suggest that reinfection or the virus coming back and infecting someone may not be plausible. Uh, these two studies were done on nine monkeys and what the scientists did was that they exposed them to the coronavirus, the monkeys got ill. But when they recovered and were exposed again to the virus, they did not get ill. Why is this good news? Well, it's good news because it shows that any vaccine that is coming may be much more effective in, because it rules out reinfection for people. So that's a good news that we should look forward to. And of course, as we know, on Thursday, the government announced new standard operating procedures that are there for travel that is going to begin on the 25th of May. That's next week. And it sounds like air travel is just going to get so much more complicated. I'm not just talking about getting in there earlier and having to wear masks and having to go through thermal screenings. It also means that you are limited to carrying just one cabin baggage and one check-in baggage that you should avoid anything that's heavy because you may not have access to trolleys. You also have to now download and print out all the tags and affix them to your bag uh, before you travel and get to the airport. And if you are from a containment zone, this means that you will not be allowed to travel. So it means that if you've been or if you come from an area that was recently in the containment zone, it may need to some clarification at the airport as authorities may need to check if it still remains in the containment zone or not. And finally, if you've been wondering or if you've been missing some major public spaces, spaces like Taj Mahal, well, the Ministry of Culture has also been coming up with standard operating procedures. 
well, you won't be allowed back into spaces like that, even though you have been missing one of the wonders of the world, you may not be able to visit it quite so soon. And when you do eventually get back in, it'll be a completely different experience. No longer will you be with mobs trying to get a glimpse of the wonderful and magnificent Taj. You will have to perhaps go in in smaller batches with your faces covered. There'll be separate entry and exit points. And what authorities suggest is that they are going to make the entire experience a lot virtual, a bit like what they've done with the National Gallery of Modern Art, where they had exhibitions online of Jamani Roy or Raja Ravi Verma. However, as we all know, the Taj has to be seen in person. Well, those are the news updates for today. Keep tracking them on hindustantimes.com.